I'm a 24-year-old woman now. This happened when I was 13 years old, walking down my street to the bus stop for school one morning. I was in 8th grade, and I wore my usual dress code appropriate outfit of skinny jeans, a collar button-down shirt from Aeropostale, a popular store all my classmates shopped at. The shirt was form-fitting, and a backpack. My bus stop was just two streets away. I was only five houses down my street, when a car that was driving towards me stopped and leaned toward their passenger window to get my attention. This man asked me for directions to Walmart. Yes, Walmart, the biggest store in our small suburban town, which was literally a five-minute drive from us. But of course my stupid teen brain didn't register this as anything weird until after. Now this man was actually fairly handsome, was dressed professionally in a collar and tie, and maybe in his mid-thirties. So this put me at ease, because he seemed completely normal, until I started telling him where to go. As I was slightly turned away to point in the right direction, I noticed he was blatantly staring up and down at my body. I got creeped out and realized this strange man definitely knew where Walmart was, and he had only perverted intent. He was most likely on his way to work, looking like a totally normal guy on the outside. Well, he politely thanked me and drove away. That was that. It opened my eyes a little, and I still randomly think about it. About how this creep lived in the same neighborhood as me, most likely just a street away. How it could have been much worse, since he could have easily figured out exactly where I live, and already knew my morning schedule. It haunts me to this day, wondering if he ever acted on his disturbing desires for 13-year-old girls, and the fact that the most normal, neighborly-looking people can deceive us. Okay, so I was called in to investigate an incident, document damages, and write up a repair estimate. I had direct contact with the victim, personally interviewed him and other parties involved, and took photos of the aftermath. This happened in the late 1990s. This man was a retired high-ranking military official who lived in a relatively large house in a very nice downtown area of town in a major central Texas city. He woke up around 2 a.m. to the sound of banging. He armed himself and walked around the house, but didn't see anything amiss. He had just laid back down when the metallic banging happened again, louder this time and sounding like it was coming from inside the house. He again got up, cautiously walked around the house, trying to find the source. At one point, he hears a voice, talking calmly, but not making sense. It is a very clear voice and sounds close, but he cannot make out where it is coming from. Every time he hears the sound or voice, he tries walking towards it, but still cannot find the source. He walks into the living room, everything is quiet, so he sits down on the sofa, trying to be quiet and listen carefully. Suddenly the banging comes again, followed by the gibberish speaking, and it is right in front of him and sounds like it is coming from the fireplace, but he can't see anything unusual. He assumes someone is on the roof near the chimney, so he goes outside and looks. The metal chimney cap is off and laying on the roof beside the chimney, but there is no one there. He goes back inside and very clearly hears a voice sounding nearby, so he leans down and looks up into the fireplace, and the voice saying gibberish sounds like it is right there. He reaches up and opens the damper doors, small heavy metal plates that open to adjust the amount of air flowing through the chimney when a fire is going. As the damper opens, he can see black hair, and at that moment a head turns, and he is looking into the filthy face of a man looking back at him, who says, Hey man, like they were old friends meeting on the street. He calls the police, who arrived and subsequently called the fire department. They were unable to extract him from the chimney via roof, so they had to smash up his fireplace, remove the heavy metal damper, and pull him out from the fireplace, naked, just to add to the bizarro nature of the encounter. It turns out that this guy had been arrested a few days before, running naked down the middle of the main street downtown in the early morning hours. He was apparently on the same disassociative drug at that time. 
He was taken to jail but had no memory of his actions, and once sober he was released, only to apparently do the same drug on the night that he climbed onto the roof and crawled headfirst down my client's chimney. As I was documenting the damage repair estimate for his insurance company, I pointed my camera up the chimney to see if I could spot any damages to the flue tiles, and spotted something high up in the flue. After zooming in and taking a couple more shots, I made out the guy's underwear, snagged on a jagged piece of mortar that had squeezed out between the flue tiles during the original assembly. When I turned 11, I started babysitting my nieces and nephews because I was finally old enough. I had been babysitting for about four years when this happened. I was about 15 at the time, and my sister worked early mornings so she had asked me to stay the night to babysit for her. I wasn't allowed to have a phone, so my mom would let me take hers, just in case. I babysat two boys, one was about eight at the time, I'll call him D, and the other was three or four, I'll call him M. My sister lived in a not-so-great part of town, so I'd always keep the doors locked up tight. Plus, I liked to listen to scary stories, and I was super into true crime, so I was a pretty paranoid kid. There was a pretty large apartment complex next to my sister's house, and it had some pretty sketchy people there. But they had a pretty nice playground and a basketball court right outside the house, and we went to play there a lot. On this particular day, though, I had just woken up, and I was making French toast for my two nephews. I was listening to music with my earbuds because they were still sleeping, but I knew they'd be up soon. You know when you have the music in your ears, how sometimes it sounds like someone is calling out to you, or you think you hear something? Well, I kept hearing noises, and I kept pulling my earbuds out to listen, but the noises would stop. I did that about a dozen times before eventually chalking it up to my imagination. About the time I was finishing up the French toast, my nephews came out of the room and into the kitchen, ready to eat. I sat my younger nephew in his booster chair and started cutting pieces up for him to eat while my older nephew was sitting at the table with a plate full of French toast. We turned on the XM radio and started playing some kids' music while eating. I thought I was hearing noises again, but I kind of tuned them out. We finally finished eating and I put the dishes in the sink and got the kids dressed. They were begging to go to the playground, so I gave in and said sure. As I was getting dressed, I heard a loud crack. I jumped and ran out of the room, pretty freaked out, and I went to check on the boys. D came out of his room with M in his arms. I looked at D and said, did you break something? He shook his head and looked absolutely petrified. I told the boys to stay in the hallway since there were no windows and I wasn't really sure what was going on. I started to walk around the house to see if something had fallen, but nothing looked out of place. I saw a shadow peeking in through the front door. The door had an oval glass pane, but it was difficult to see in unless you have your hands cupping your face while pressed against the window. I couldn't see his face, but he was in all black and he had black gloves on. I was standing to the side, so he couldn't see me. He looked around for a minute or two, until he ran around the house again. I quietly ran back into the hallway and shoved my nephews into the bathroom and whispered, Lock the door behind you. He was panicked and confused, but I didn't have a phone with me and I had to go back to the kitchen to get it. He closed and locked the door and I ran back out to grab my mom's phone. I heard glass cracking again and I started to lose my shit. I started crying and shaking and I called my sister. I don't really know why, but I called her and told her that someone was trying to break into the house. She freaked out and told me I needed to call the cops. I told her I was scared and I didn't want to hang up. I finally did and called the police. I was still in the kitchen and I saw another man run across the backyard. I was sobbing and shaking and the police weren't being quick enough. After asking my address and the necessary questions, they told me to stay on the line and they were sending someone out. It felt like it took forever, but finally a cop car drove around the neighborhood and said we were fine. I told him that there were two men outside trying to get in, so they got out of their cars and looked around the house. They went to the side that I heard the giant crack, and they saw one of the windows was shattered and another was cracked. They were definitely trying to get in, 
but I don't know what they were planning on doing. There was a giant bed frame in front of the two broken windows. I think if it wasn't there, I would probably not be telling this story. They never caught the men who were trying to get in. But I hope I'm never in a situation like that again. Hello guys, don't really know where to start this other than saying I'm a uni student, and I happen to be up with my girlfriend at this time. It's winter, so it was dark during this time too. My girlfriend likes to look out of the window and look at the stars at night. However, last night, or I should really say this morning, she asked me whether there was a person there. I immediately looked out the window, not expecting anything strange other than a person walking by. As soon as I look out the window, I see it. There is a guy standing outside of my back gate, about a foot away, just staring at it. Arms by his side, blank expression from what I could make out. I duck as soon as I see him out of pure fear and tell my girlfriend to move from the window. I then turn on the lamp as a kind of, I'm here, don't fucking come into my property. As I look out of the window again, he is now up the street, scurrying away. My uni housemates and I had a few things to point out. Number one, if this was an attempted robbery or someone contemplating it, then why pick an area in which many people get up for work and would probably be up? The second thing is, if this guy wasn't planning to rob us, then what? Why is he just standing there looking and not moving? We did not know how long this guy was here. He could have been there anywhere from 2am to 6.20am. As the last time my girlfriend looked at the sky was 2am. The third thing is, from the four months we have been here, numerous times at night, we hear the gates of our neighbor's houses open and close at strange times. We have an apple tree next to our gate, so we thought, maybe he was just picking apples before work. That didn't make sense, as once again, this guy didn't move, he was standing like a statue, staring at our gate. Another thing was maybe he was peeing. No, again, hands by his side, and not moving for ages makes that very unlikely. He didn't have a pet with him either. Our next step now is to see if this guy is a regular visitor of my house, or if this is just a one-off thing. I hope the latter. If this guy comes back tonight, or anytime soon, I will be sure to update. I will also try to attach pictures of my gate to show where he was in relation to it. If anyone has any theories slash explanations, that would be greatly appreciated, and allow me to sleep. Thanks.